Welcome. Welcome back to the award-winning Ed Brown Show. I am your host, Kamari to Richmond, and we're going to continue our conversation with Paulette Gaines-Wood talking about the noble Anthony and his lady Cleopatra. Now, Paulette is an award-winning author. This is an award-winning book, and it's such an interesting story. And so we're going to just kind of start from the beginning for to let more people know a little <laughs> bit more about <laughs> Anthony and Cleopatra. So tell them, tell us about Anthony and his lady Cleopatra. Well, Anthony and Cleopatra, um, the English Mastiff and his bride, his lovely wife, uh, the Abyssinian cat, um, began their time together in ancient Egypt. And uh, they s made the ultimate sacrifice in saving two human children. And the Egyptian mm -hmm. goddess Beset rewarded them with the gift of reincarnation. So they come to live with a family, always a family that has children. They help to raise those children, as all pets do. Mm -hmm. And as the children grow up and go off into their lives, they die as pets do. Mm -hmm. But then they reappear at a new time and a new place with a different family. Right now, they're here with the Wilkinson family uh, here in uh, Bowie, Maryland. So the first book, The Noble Anthony and His Lady Cleopatra, is kind of the introduction. Okay. And so you meet them, and you meet Auntie Emmajean, and uh, who makes Cleopatra's extensive wardrobe. Uh, you go with the family as they go to uh, buoy fest and have quite an adventure. Mm -hmm. There, uh, Cleopatra gets herself into some trouble um, because she goes into the forbidden catnip patch and uh, that doesn't work out well for her. Um, but in the second book, the noble Anthony and his lady Cleopatra return home they actually return to ancient Egypt. Wow. And in that book, mm -hmm. we deal with death, uh, adventure, and the last part is about new life. Wow. I wanted to, death was a subject that I really wanted to deal with because mm -hmm. for um, many children, in particular, their first experience with death is through a pet, whether it's a dog, a cat, a guinea pig, the mm -hmm. goldfish. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's a time when this many families have to have uh, this kind of conversations. And uh, so a um, neighborhood uh, friend of theirs, mm -hmm. um, and dies and we learn some exciting and secret things about dogs and cats that very few humans have known uh, in the past. And uh, I will just give a hint and say, mm -hmm. dogs have two souls. I love that. Of course, I want to know more about that. But that will be for book number three. <laughs> now that that's actually in, in book number two. In book number two. Well, just to when a dog had a dog who has a family, when they die, all right, the soul divides, and part of his soul goes to the Rainbow Bridge, which many people have heard of as a place where your pet waits for you to arrive and then you all go off into eternity slash heaven together. Wow. So part of the soul goes to the Rainbow Bridge. Okay. The other part of the dog's soul goes to the dog constellation, uh, Cirrus, and lives among the stars forever. Mm. So if you ever, in a sense, want to see your pet, all you have to do is look toward the stars. I love that. That is so interesting. That is so interesting. And why ancient Egypt? 
most of us love, you know, all of Egypt and its, its glory. Uh, so why did you choose ancient Egypt? The Egyptians were just a very fascinating people. I mean, they had a wonderful, wonderful culture. Yes. And um, as a matter of fact, as Cleopatra puts it, this is a time when humans were wiser and worshiped cats as they should. And yes, they did worship cats. Um, and they went so far as to mummify them, uh, right. just as they did humans, uh, to keep their spirits uh, together. And um, they, the Egyptian god Beset, all right, has, is always depicted with the face of the ca a cat and the body of a human um, woman. And matter of fact, in the adventure part of the book where Cleopatra has to work with her ancient self to rescue the boys, all right, and they have to um, uh, pick up a key in the dirt and the dust with the wind blowing mm -hmm. horribly, and they have to do this with their mouths. And the queen of the, the, the temple is, is like, no, this is, this is not right. <laughs> Anybody who does something like this, you know, you're supposed to have hands and fingers and not have to do this with your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. And now I love the imagery of the, the cover of the book. And uh, you see, of course, Cleopatra is sitting on Anthony's head. Yes. But they're looking uh, in the mirror and they're seeing their ancient self, yes. full garb and everything. So tell us about that. Right. Well, Auntie Emma Jean, who we meet in the first book, has you know grown very close to the family. Mm -hmm. And matter of fact, is the parents uh, have an opportunity for a once in a lifetime vacation. And it just so happens that who they would normally leave the mm -hmm. boys with, no one is available. And so very reluctantly, mm -hmm. um, they ask Auntie Emma Jean, and, um, who is delighted. Of course. And um, so she, but you know, she has never married. She has no children. Uh, she doesn't have any other family, and she has become concerned that when it is her time to go to what is referred to as the forever sleep, mm -hmm. that there won't be anyone to remember her and think well of her. And so Anthony and Cleopatra t tries to show her that, yes, there w still would be, mm -hmm. but she wants to take the boys to Egypt to give them an adventure that nobody else can give them mm -hmm. so that they will remember her. And Anthony and Cleopatra tried to explain to her and tell her why this is not a good idea <laughs> and that there are many things that could go wrong. But Auntie Emma Jean discovers a willfulness in her that she didn't know she had mm -hmm. because she actually says to Cleopatra, you know, my lady, I do not need your permission to do this. Wow. Very few people speak to Cleopatra <laughs> like this. Right. And so they decide that the only way that they are going to let, like Anthony in particular, are going to let her, his boys be mm -hmm. taken to a way like this is if they go with them. To which Auntie Emma Jean was, well, okay, yes. Right. <laughs> you know? As long as we're all going. <laughs> so that we discover that Auntie Emma Jean can do a little magic herself. And so, yes, she creates the spell that takes them back. 
and when they first arrive, mm -hmm. it, the sky is beautiful and blue, and plants are blooming, and the trees mm -hmm. are green, and you know, you just can't help but suck in the air because the atmosphere is so clean and then everybody begins coughing and gagging and, and it's like, what what is that smell what is that horrible smell well there are a lot more animals around in ancient <laughs> egypt and they don't have the same sewage systems that we have hey. here today Amazing. So that is a little bit of a shock, but as everyone else is trying to, what is this terrible smell to Auntie Emma Jean is, it's home, <laughs> we're home. And so she's like, this is it. And you know, I love that journey because a lot of us as humans, you think about if, you do, if you're not married, if you don't have children, who is going to remember me? Yes. And you have that rich legacy with Anthony and Cleopatra to do that. So Anthony and Cleopatra are married and living in Bowie. Mm -hmm. And why, why Bowie? Bowie is a great place to live. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, you know, we're right outside of DC. We're not far from Baltimore. Philadelphia is not too far away. Mm -hmm. And right. even New York City is just Not a few far, hours right. uh, away. Right. But um, it's just a nice community. And mm -hmm. I personally have always found it to be very accepting and welcoming and a place where many people come together to help each other. Mm -hmm. So like in the first book, there's a big snowstorm and the people on their street come together to help clear the snow. So they put together teams that, you know, one group, uh, a house gets a snow blower and two shovelers. So <laughs> to do. Teamwork. <laughs> right. To take care of all the driveways and especially the homes that might have older people that you know can't get out and shovel themselves right. and so one family sets up you know cookies and hot chocolate for the, everybody who's shoveling and another family says you know bring your wet dry, uh, gloves and here put mm -hmm. them in our dryer so everybody can have you know dry gloves and warm nice. hands and um, you know, I've seen this on my own streets. I remember one year we had a big snow and uh, one of our neighbors had this monster eat the car size uh, <laughs> snow blower. And he was up and down the street, you know, trying to clear, especially the public parts of the street, the sidewalks, wow. and anybody who needed the help in their uh, driveway. These are things that people in Bowie do, and I wanted to show this off to the world. Yeah, and I agree with you about living in Bowie. It is a very special place, and there is Bowie Fest, and Cleopatra, she sits on Anthony's head, and. She just kind of strolls down on Bowie Fest looking fabulous. All right. Oh, yes, they <laughs> love to go to Bowie Fest. <laughs> and a matter of fact, one of the cap with their friends, sort of, uh, they meet the lusty Tara Tupa. She mm -hmm. is a black Labrador retriever. And she's always had her eye on Anthony. Oh, my goodness. And um, <laughs> matter of fact, you know, she's even said to Anthony, oh, I see you're still walking around with that fur ball on your head. <laughs> and, you know, Anthony, well, yes, my lovely bride is still with uh -huh. me. And uh, Cleopatra will say to her, ah, yes, so nice to see you again, Tara Tupa. How did that horrible ca case of mange <laughs> for you. And of course, there are two prices. Oh, my human mom said that wasn't my fault. I'm a good girl. I'm a good girl. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I love it. And so are Anthony and Cleopatra, they're reincarnated. 
again and again and mm -hmm. again. And tell us the importance of that and why that's such a big part of the story. It's an opportunity, even though they are here in Bowie now, uh, mm -hmm. for future stories, mm -hmm. uh, to have them in different places and having uh, different experiences. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, in the second book, it's actually mentioned that um, they were with President Lincoln and that Anthony tried very hard to keep him from going to the theater um, that night. Matter of fact, the guards actually had to enclose him in the barn with the horses. And still, wow. Cleopatra got herself into the carriage with, um, with Mrs. Lincoln and ended up being there at the time of the shooting. And uh, mm -hmm. even before President Lincoln was assassinated, it, the family had gone through a horrible time because they had lost a son. Okay. And so Anthony and Cleopatra kind of had arrived before that to help them through the time of this great and terrible mm -hmm. loss of their, uh, of their son. And then they were able to be with Mrs. Lincoln after the assassination to help her. So there are just all these different opportunities of different figures mm -hmm. throughout history where they have a possibility of being. Right now, I really kind of like them in Bowie and what's <laughs> going on here. But, um, you know, they can refer to uh, these other times and these experiences and you know they I might just later write about them at a very different time and that would be really interesting so I love that that they're traveling through time it, I mean that makes it so much uh, so much more interesting to think about all the possibilities yes. of where they where they've been and, and where they're going, and in talking about where they're going, Cleopatra has some special powers of her own. Yes, that was part of her reward mm -hmm. um, at that time, because see, that's the other thing. When they go back to ancient Egypt, all right, she doesn't have those powers then. All right, they haven't been given to her yet at that time. Mm -hmm. So when trouble happens, they have to work together without any magic. Mm -hmm. And so that it's the, Anthony has to get together the other temple guard dogs and um, the other cats that are in the mm -hmm. temple and everything. So, you know, it's like I said, sometimes I didn't want it to be a book about magic. Okay. All right. Like I said, she has some powers, but that's not all she has. And I wanted to show how, yes, sometimes you still have to solve problems um, right. without it. Right. Absolutely. And uh, so the two of, the four of them, the present and uh, the past Cleopatra and Anthony have to really team and work together to get this done without magic. And I love the, the stories because your stories are very human stories. So we can see ourselves in Anthony and Cleopatra because they're very, very human stories. But now the two of them, they're married, they're living in Bowie, they're traveling through time and you are we're on looking at maybe book number three mm -hmm. next <laughs> next year and so they are able to communicate with children and some family yes very so now how few do adults. they do how do they do their how do they communicate with the children and family well you just kind of, it's almost, I guess, kind of almost like mind reading. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I haven't seen them in, in animation to know if when they're talking to the kids, their mouths actually move or not. Um, but um, people have asked me, the authors that influence me, mm -hmm. 
Uh, and it's Gene Shepard who wrote The Christmas Story. Okay. All right, uh, Stephen King who writes wonderful tension. Wonderful and stories. <laughs> and also Rudyard Kipling mm -hmm. is my very favorite book is The Jungle Book. And okay. I saw as a very young child that the, it's been made into a movie several times. Several times. And right. there was one before Disney's animation, mm -hmm. which was live action. And that was my first time of seeing animals speak. All right, and once again, they did not do it with the mouths moving. We heard their, their thoughts, the thoughts okay. and their feelings. But that's what brought that part alive to me, that animals do have thoughts, feelings, can communicate with each other and with, uh, with us. Mm -hmm. And I like the part where you talk about, like with the children, when it comes to death, that might be their first experience. And so if they, how are they communicating with the children, like dealing with their grief? I, well, the eldest boy in the Wilkinson family, Jeffrey, has a very special connection with Anthony. Anthony mm -hmm. is his dog. He, he is, you know, Anthony's, mm -hmm. uh, Jeffrey's boy. And um, so after they, go through this death, Jeffrey is very concerned about someday losing uh, Anthony. Mm -hmm. And so he brings out, that night he brings out his pillow and blanket and he's going to sleep with Anthony and keep him safe. And Cleopatra tells him that, you know, everything that lives has a beginning as and an end. This nice. is the way of the universe. And what would our world be like if every being, every insect, every plant that had ever lived was still here? <laughs> right? It'd be a very full place. <laughs> and and, um, and if you were old or injured or something that the forever sleep mm -hmm. is actually a release and okay. that, you know, this is the time that, yes, your family feels sad and you're mourned and you're missed, but this is the way of the universe. It's our circle of life. And where do, when Anthony and Cleopatra, where do they go? How do they, what, what is their journey from, they've passed on and they're coming back, but where, where do they go? Well, Jeffrey asks, you know, about this, mm -hmm. what happens with the forever sleep. All right, so Anthony tells them with Cleopatra's permission that's all right to share of this. Of course. <laughs> share this information. That dogs have two souls. And mm -hmm. so a dog who has a family, when they go to the forever sleep, their soul divides and part of it goes to the Rainbow Bridge, which is from a very famous poem. And that says that when uh, family pets die, there's a special set part of, I guess, heaven, where okay. they wait for their human family to arrive since their lifespan's not as long as ours. Right. All right, and then wow. when their humans arrive, they all go off into heaven slash eternity mm -hmm. uh, together. So that's what happens with half of their soul. Okay. The other half of their soul goes to the stars, to the dog constellation, Sirius, and this so that you can always look to the sky and see okay. your pet. Now, dogs that don't have a family, and of course there are way too many um, that, uh, that don't, mm -hmm. all right, then their entire soul goes to the stars where they get to run and play with every dog that has ever existed, and they are never alone, and they are always loved. And that's right. what we want as humans. Yes. Now, 
cats. All right. Different. Also, yes. <laughs> also have two souls. Yes, and like dogs, part goes to the Rainbow Bridge. Okay. But with cats, the other part of their soul returns to a secret, an ancient temple of Beset in mm -hmm. Egypt. So they spend the rest of, part of their soul spends the rest of eternity there, except for Cleopatra. She can never be apart from Anthony. So Beset has given permission okay. that her soul, part, that part of her soul, would go to the stars with her Anthony. That is beautiful. <laughs> that really is beautiful. And looking at a third book, I know we're, we're kind of skipping, skipping mm -hmm. forward there, but are you just going to continue with Anthony and Cleopatra? Do we have other animals coming in? Well, the third book is going to be a good way to introduce some other animals. Okay. I mean, in the first two books, we meet Sniffer and his kitten, the great Alexander. Matter of fact, Cleopatra does a great naming ceremony uh, for the kitten, uh, Alexander. But, um, um, but they have a whole adventure and story of their own, okay. Sniffer and Alexander. Um, there's a favorite story of mine, Aries the Green Leg Dog. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a new character um, that we will, uh, we will meet. And his friends, uh, the two ducks. And um, so, yes, there, there are other friends, you know, that, uh, that they have. Um, like I said, some of them we met at the first book at Bowie Fest. Okay. All right, Rocky McTavish, based on a pet of my husband and I, um, who is the great hunter uh, mm -hmm. of the neighborhood. And our own cat, Rocky, suddenly decided when she was nine years mm -hmm. old to become this great huntress. <laughs> and at first she would bring home um, moles and chipmunks especially with the start with the moles, and we teased her about being the great huntress of blind things. She was offended by this of and course. began to move up the food chain. <laughs> and like cats do when they bring you, they are helping to, they feel they're helping to provide for the family. This is why they bring these things home used to really freak out the UPS guy because she left these things at the front door. But, but, so, but the character in the book, Rocky McTavish, um, could, we could expand on this a little bit. And uh, this particular Rocky brings home a 10 point deer. Yeah, you know, unleashed it on the front steps. Right. Well, Paulette, I want to thank you so much for being my first guest on the show. And I just, I love Anthony and his lady Cleopatra. So thank you everyone for tuning in and uh, watching us today. And stay tuned, we'll have some more great guests. And you can find the noble Anthony and his lady Cleopatra on Amazon. Louise. Louise. Can you give me an example of an inspirational quote? Don't play yourself. The key is to make it. And who said that? I did. Now that's a major key alert. Learn the real major keys to getting to college at GetSchool.com.